The doctor is in. Our next guest lived in a remote Amazon village with indigenous people and realized how far we have strayed from our ancestors' natural lifestyles, right down to our communities and relationship with food. Now he's on a mission to help people live healthier lifestyles the way our ancestors did. Joining us is Dr. Chad Walding, the co-founder of Native Path, who is a physical therapist and holistic health coach. Welcome to Bloom, Dr. Chad. Thank you, thank you very much. It's so good to be here. It's great to have you because your journey has been so fascinating. What did you observe when you lived with indigenous people in the Amazon? Uh, it was such a precious time in my life. You know, I've, I've been so fascinated with ancestral health as a, as a healthcare practitioner because for the most part, our ancestors, when they were eating, moving, and living in their natural ways, eating their natural foods, they were virtually free of a lot of the chronic diseases that we face today. So when I was there, I got to spend a lot of time doing things they do. I, I would hunt with them. I would go fishing with them. Uh, we would prepare food together. We actually spent a lot of time around the fire, telling stories, singing songs. So there was a great sense of connection and community there. Uh, but what really fascinated me the most was the children. You know, the physical therapist in me is fascinated with movement, particularly movement quality. And these children, they moved so perfectly, perfect squats, perfect pushing, perfect gait patterns. And, and I noticed them carrying other children, picking things up and, and t chopping wood and carrying water. And the other thing I noticed really behind all of this was that these children were taking radical personal responsibility, you know, really learning how to do everything on their own in a way that I was not raised with in, in, our, in our modern culture. And since I've come back, that's really become my mission is to help people take personal responsibility for their health and not rely on just their doctor or some pill or some quick fix to fix them, but to really get back in harmony with their biology, the way they're, they're supposed to eat, the way they're supposed to move, and the way they're supposed to live. Yeah, because we've really moved in the opposite direction, you know, with childhood and o adult obesity levels, you know, at record highs. So what yeah. are some examples of the foods that we should be avoiding? So the foods we should be avoiding are things like sugar, high fructose corn syrup, a lot of the processed and refined foods. You know the foods when you, when you pick up the package and you look on the back of it and you look at the ingredients and you can't really pronounce those ingredients? Those are the type of foods that we should be avoiding. And there's a lot of common foods that we think are healthy foods but are actually very harmful to our health, very harmful to our digestive system. And those are things like modern grains, breads. Um, conventional dairies, milks, cheeses, those can be all, all problematic. And another area that people overlook quite frequently is the, is the quality of the fats. So we're, we're typically cooking with things like uh, canola oil, safflower oil, vegetable oil. These are very cheap, very unstable fats that everyone should be removing from their, their pantry because they're very toxic, very unstable to use. So those are the big things we shouldn't be using. So what should we look for when choosing foods? Well, one of the things I always encourage people to do is start focusing more on quality of calories as opposed to quantity. So we come from this mindset of I have to eat less, exercise more, and if I just count my calories, count my points, I'll be okay. But a thousand calories of pizza and Doritos and sodas is different than a thousand calories of quality proteins and vegetables and good quality fats, have different responses in the body. So I encourage people to focus more on maximizing nutrition and minimizing toxicity and focusing more on the quality of those calories. And we're talking real, whole, nutrient-dense foods with the least amount of toxicity. So when you're shopping, you wanna shop more for the whole real food stuff. You know, a, a broccoli doesn't have a label on it that tells you how many calories it has. A, a quality grass-fed beef or chicken doesn't have that on there. It's, it's, it's just natural. So you wanna shop more on the ends. Whole real vegetables, whole real foods, quality pro proteins, and replacing your fats, those toxic fats, with good quality fats that you can cook with, like coconut oil, olive oil, um, ghee, um, those are avocado oil, those are much more stable fats to cook with. You know, you mentioned exercise, and I was just curious, how often do you recommend that we should be up and moving? Is a once a day workout enough? And are you more into cardio, more into weightlifting? What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people have the mindset of, you know, if I just go to the gym for one hour a day, um, then, then I'll be good, right? And, and let's, before we get to talk about what to do there, we have to just think about that. A lot of people are just moving for one hour a day, 
And the other 23 hours out of the day, they're just sitting still. But that's not how our ancestors moved. And it turns out when we sit still, sit still for long periods of time, a lot of chemical changes happen in our body. A lot of negative hormonal changes happen in our body. It sets us up for obesity and heart disease and diabetes and even cancer. So instead of just moving for one hour of the day, and sitting still for the rest, what I recommend is getting up and moving throughout the day. You know, um, setting a timer for every 45 minutes to every hour, get up, go walk down the street and come back. And another thing, when you move, I recommend moving in a very functional way, in a way that's going to improve your human frame and your posture. It's going to get you sitting tall. So doing things like squatting, bending, pushing, pulling, planking, cores, things that are going to get your body stable. The way we would naturally do that. The way we naturally yeah. do that, exactly. All right. I, I could sit here and talk to you all day. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I, I want to thank you for sharing uh, much of what you've learned, and, and we want to know more, so visit Dr. Chad's website at nativepath.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Chad. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank we're going to be back with more Bloom right after this. Mm-hmm.